So we just released Yulv8.2. We're going to cover all the major updates. So we have a bunch of cool new features integrated directly into Yulv8. So definitely going to test those out. First of all, we have Yulv8 World Model, which is basically just an open vocabulary model that can detect a bunch of different objects. You can even like prompt it for the specific objects that you want to detect. Now we can also go in and fine tune it on our own custom data set. We also have oriented bounding boxes. So now you can do object tracking with the Yolo V8 model for oriented bounding boxes. If you don't want the traditional bounding boxes, but want our bounding boxes more fit around the objects. So we also have integration for the new version in the Yolo family, which is Yolo V9. You can both do inference, training, export the model and so on. A lot of the Yolo V9 model is built on top of the Autolytics framework. So definitely go ahead and test that out again. It is a pretty cool model. We can also do batch inferencing as we're going to take a look at here in just a second, like how we can compare latency versus throughput and so on. So basically like how you can process multiple images in a single batch at inference time. We also have Raspberry Pi 5 continuous integration testing. So that is also pretty cool. And then lastly, the thing that I'm probably the most excited about is 40% faster import time compared to the previous versions of Autolytics. So let's say that you actually spend two minutes a day waiting for Autolytics to import all the different modules, dependencies and so on. Then you actually got a minute back for the new version. We're going to cover some of the minor updates where we, for example, have features and functionality for class-wise object counting. So let's say that you want to count a number of objects for your different objects that you're detecting could be custom objects, but also pretty much if you're just creating like a counting system, you can go in and do object counting class wise. We also have speed estimation, distance calculations, which are some of the new features. So we also have new data sets, which has been integrated into the Autolytics framework. So you can use that for testing and also training custom models. We can also do deployments with Jetson Nano, Add TPUs and so on. Some of those documentation pages was actually like a community contribution. So thanks a lot to all of you guys contributing to the whole Yolo V8 Autolytics framework, Yolo world. Now we can also do fine tuning on those models. We're definitely going to cover all of it. We're going to create videos for all the different updates. So we have this Yolo world model, which is basically just an open vocabulary optic detection model. You can read a bit about it here. You get a quick overview, the key features and so on. This is running in real time as well. You can even prompt it for specific objects that you want to detect. So inference with offline vocabulary powered by Yolo V8, benchmark and so on. You can read all about it. Now we can also see the available model. So we have all the different variations. So small, medium, large, X large and so on. We both have the first version and we also have a new version two. Now we can actually go in and export the version two. So definitely just use that model directly because now we also support export. This hasn't been updated yet, but now we can also train YOLO world models on your own custom data set. So that's pretty cool. Definitely try that out as well. Here we can see the zero shot transfer on the Coco dataset. So it actually like does a pretty good job and even comparable with the models that has just been trained on that data set. So this Yolo world model has basically just been trained on a large scale data set for open vocabulary optic detection, but we still get pretty good zero shot transfer on the Coco data set, which is normally the data set that we're using for pre-training the models. We can see some user examples here. I'm going to show you just in a second. So right now we can both do prediction, we can do validation, we can even go in and train it and so on now. You can use the exact same commands, both in Python and also in the command line. So let's now go down and grab this command to the command line. And again, we're just going to use the version two. So let's just make sure that we specify that. So right now we have YOLO predict model. We're using the small model source two, and we also can specify the image size. We also want to see the results. So let's make sure that we actually specify the show command as well. Set that equal to true. Now we should be able to run it and it's going to open up the video stream. So right now to start with, it is going to download the model. So this is the version two model. Success, we are able to open up the webcam. So just pull out the webcam here. This is one that we're going to do detections with. If we go inside the terminal, we can see that we act like run around eight to 10, probably like 10 milliseconds on average. So that's pretty awesome. But that is almost 100 frames per second that we're running directly. So we're gonna just move it around. Right now we're just detecting an arbitrary optic. So this is open vocabulary detection. I can just move it around. We can see all the different objects that it's able to detect. We also have RNG bounding boxes tracking with that now. So we can just do tracking as we do in all the other different tasks here. So we both have optic detection, where we can do tracking on top of that, segmentation, post estimation, and so on. When we want to use the YOLO V8 model with the oriented bounding boxes, 
and want to run tracking on top of it. The only thing that we need to change is basically just when we do a forward pass, when we do our prediction, either when we specify it with the model, but instead of calling validation, we can now go in and call track. And then you don't have to specify anything if we just go inside our different modes. And then we have our track. So this is the different modes that you need to set up both in your custom Python script or if you're using it in the command line. So let's just scroll down. We already have a video about it. And now we just need to change the model to the oriented bounding box version. So that's pretty much it. We have bot sort and also by track directly. We need to specify the source. Show if you want to show, it's going to pull in the tracker automatically. You can also go in and adjust different tracker parameters, but that's pretty much it. We also have Yolvi 9. We have already covered that. We have a bunch of different videos. We can go in fine-tune this specific model as well. Let's just scroll a bit down. We can also do segmentation with it. They even have like panoptic segmentation, but right now we're only covering optic detection and instance segmentation. So yeah, you can go in, fine-tune your model on YOLO v9, run inference and so on. It is built on top of the Autolytics framework. So when you're doing inferencing can also be like both in batches and so on. Right now we're using OpenVINO to optimize it for batch inferencing, but we kind of like have this trade-off between latency and also throughput. So it really depends on your application and project, which one of them you want to optimize for. Let's say that you actually like want to have real-time applications, could be like self-driving cars, then you actually like want to have the lowest latency as possible and then just process each frame. And when we're talking about throughput, it's basically just like how much can we actually like get through within a certain time. So that's also very important for different use cases. So to understand the trade-off between latency and throughput, let's just make an analogy. And if you want to go more into details, you can go inside the Autolytics documentation and read through this. So say that you want to order a cup of coffee, you go up to the counter and then you order your coffee, you get it pretty quickly. So we have low latency, but that doesn't mean that we have high throughput if you only have like one counter, for example. Let's say that we have multiple different counters, but it takes longer to order and also get your coffee, then it might actually like be beneficial because the throughput can be higher compared to if you're processing each individual order one by one or like sequentially compared to if you're doing it in batches. So we can actually like have higher latency and also higher throughput at the same time. So sometimes low latency doesn't mean high throughput. So it really depends on your applications and projects, which one you want to optimize for. And even the models, they can have specific architectures. It could also be hardware dependent if we can do batch inferencing, if you're optimizing for throughput or latency. So that's pretty much just a quick analogy to understand this new feature better. So that's pretty cool. We have all the different guides. You just have to go inside the guides tab in the Autolytics documentation. But if we just go inside our update counting, we can now go in and count specific classes. So if we just scroll a bit down here, we can see some real world applications where this counting system is used just to give you guys some ideas. So we can take this code snippet directly, paste it into our own applications and projects and use it directly. So if you just go a bit further down, we can actually like see the different kind of like arguments that we need to set. So we have our view image, rec points for our line points, and then we can also specify the class names. So these are like the names that we want to count. So this is the class wise optic counting, which is pretty cool. So we also have speed estimation. We have a dedicated video for that, where we basically just set up the code and also run it through a bunch of different videos. So we can try to estimate the speed of cars driving on a highway. So that's a pretty cool video. We can also see some of the applications down here and some examples. You can grab the code for all of the things here that we have. So we can see all the different arguments and so on. We have it both for speed estimation, but we also have it for distance calculation. It is all similar, you just have to copy paste the code and use it. One of the other things here is that we now have new data sets. So one of the cool data sets, which might be nice to actually test out is this new brain tumor data set. So it's pretty cool. I really like these types of images here again, because it's also hard to annotate. Like if you have no experience, if you have no knowledge within this field, it is pretty hard to go in and annotate your own custom data set. So that's why it's pretty cool that we now have the data set directly integrated into it. And this is definitely a very important and useful use case. We have the Jetson Nano and HTVU integration. So this is basically just like how we can deploy the different models. You can see it all over here to the left. So we have guides for all of it. We go over each single step. We have all the details and so on and also comparisons. So we have NVIDIA, Jetson, Raspberry Pi, Trident Inference Server, STPU, and Raspberry Pi, and so on. Guides, documentation, everything is covered in here. So the last thing that we're going to cover in this new YOLO v8.2 update is basically just integrations. So we also support a bunch of different integrations, could both be for like how we can export models, optimize framework when we export models, and want to run 
inference. Could also be when we're training, RoboFlow for our data set, weights and bias and so on for training, TensorBoard, Amazon SageMaker, and all of those things. We have guides for all of it. It's pretty easy to go through. And if we just want to take a look at one of them, we can go inside our OpenVINO or even TensorRT because now in YOLOV 8.2, we support TensorRT version 10. So that's pretty cool as well. So previously it was version 8 that was to go to, but now we have support for version 10 as well. So this is very good if you want to optimize your model, like it would run significantly faster compared to using the raw PyTorch model. And we have everything in here. So we covered all the different features in the new YOLOV 8 point to update definitely go ahead and test it out make sure that you actually like upgrade the ultralytics pip package so you can directly use it in your own applications and projects